Well, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we're going to build another nightlight. Uh, this one's going to be completely different than the one we did before. The one we did before, if you remember, uh, we built it, we put some flowers in it, and then uh, we put it in our uh, nightlight stand and lit it up. This one here, we're going to have a photograph in the middle of it here. It can be of anything. Uh, it can be of a pet. Uh, maybe uh, you have a newborn, maybe uh, you have a, a new uh, grandbaby or a great grandbaby. Anyway, any favorite picture, something of Yellowstone or uh, just any kind of a, a flower or whatever you have that you, uh, that you really enjoy. So anyway, the picture is going to go right here in the middle here. It's going to be a three by three square on point. Across the top here, I think we're going to make a, uh, an arch. Uh, we're kind of making this as we go along, so like we've done on some of our other projects. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to move all this stuff out of the way and we'll get started. We're using our, our carpenter square here to create a, a backstop so that we can draw straight lines or, or 45 degree angle lines. Um, we're going to draw our arch with this uh, ruler that I made. I've showed you this on other videos. It has a pivot point right here and then on every inch. It has a hole drilled in it, and then every quarter inch it has a hole drilled in it. So we can space it away to get uh, uh, the uh, arch the way we want it. And of course, we've got a ruler and some other things here. So we'll push this out of the way. The first thing we're going to do, we are going to make a pattern for it. So I've taken my drawing paper here, and I've hinged it here so I can push it back like this. We take and push it back. And this is where we're going to make our pattern on this drawing paper right here. Uh, I taped two together because I don't know how big this is going to be yet. So we're just going to draw it out and start to work on it. And then we'll we'll figure that out as we go along. So anyway, we're going to take a couple of pieces of carbon paper. I remember carbon side down. Otherwise, it'll transfer to the back of your drawing sheet. And that won't be much help to you. So just lap them over here a little bit. Then take your drawing paper and bring it back over real tight. And make sure you pull it down really, really tight. And I'm going to get a couple pieces of masking tape right here. And I'm going to tape it down here at the bottom. And one on each corner here so it doesn't move on us. Um, if you don't tape it down good and it moves on you, then you're going to have some lines that aren't going to be quite accurate. So it's a good idea to make sure that your drawing paper doesn't move. So anyway, uh, this is our center line here. I already drew it in here. We're going to take our ruler with all the holes in it down here at the pivot point here wherever I want to start here I think I'm going to start right about there and we'll make our arches here so down at the bottom here I'm just taking my push pin pushing it in I'm going to line that up right there and I'm just going to take my pencil here I don't know how big to make this, so I'm just going to make a, an arch about that big. That's way too big. And this about, I'm going to make this about three quarters of an inch wide. So we'll line it up on the circle here again, and we'll come down to three quarter inch. And we'll make it just like that. Okay, so we're get, we got rid of that. We got, our, we got our arch taken care of. So now we're going to look at here. Uh, how do we want to put our picture in here? I, I want to put it in about a half an inch down from here. So we'll come in here and we'll measure a half an inch. Put a little line there. Our picture, this is a picture of uh, my granddaughter's cat or one of the cats. She has several. So anyway, uh, it's cut on a three by three. So if you measure across the point to point, it's four and a quarter. So we'll come down four and a quarter to allow for the picture. And I want this half inch to match down here. So we'll come down here a half an inch. Right here. This will be where our project's going to end now. So we, we, we figured that out. So, we, so we'll, we'll take and we'll draw us a line right there. This is the end of the project right here. This is where, this is where it'll go into our... Uh, into our nightlight stand right here. So I'm going to draw this fairly light right there for right now. So as we move along. So now we're going to draw in our, our place for our photograph here. And where we're going to do that, we're just going to bring our 45 degree triangle in here. And here again, I'm going to do this fairly light right now. Make sure it's what we want. 
Just come down here like that. Come on across here with your with your square. And there we go. So let's get rid of any tag ends here we have here. We don't want to get too confused on what we're doing here. So that gives us a couple other numbers. Now we got we got our spacing here for here for here. This obviously here will be gone. So our photograph now will go in here just like this. And we may or may not use this photograph. I've got several others. Uh, this one here is a little pixelated. So we might, uh, we might take a look at some other photographs that we have. But <clears throat> for around the photograph, we're going to use some iridescent uh, ripple glass. Uh, it's actually, actually called granite, but it, uh, it, uh, it's uh, iridescent. So I'm going to come in here and I want to make a, uh, a border about a half an inch here and so you know it's going to quit right here so this is this is perfect so this will show us this is going to be our halfway point right here so we'll pull this up right here and here again i'm going to make this real light because i'll come in and darken it when we get when we get the final project here okay uh, i've used this ruler before it's not really a ruler it's a piece of aluminum angle it's a half inch on this side, three quarter on this side. So it works out really well if you're building something that uh, uses standard sizes like three eighths, half inch, quarter, three quarter, that type of thing. So this is a half an inch. So I'm going to set it right here. And I'm going to draw our line. Like that. And I'm going to set it right here. This is kind of cheating, but it works well. Okay, so that's where that's going to go right there. This line here is going to go on across here because we're going to have two pieces up here that are going to create uh, the rest of the uh, border around our photograph. So uh, I'll come back up here and put it a little bit longer line in here because we don't know where they're going to go yet either. So we'll add that one. And we'll come back over here and add one right here. Just a little, just move it on out here a little bit so we'll have a line to work with. Okay, so now here, I want a border that goes all the way up to here. And it's going to be three quarters of an inch wide. Here again, this ruler I said before, or this piece of angle of loom has a three quarter inch side. So that works out perfect. We'll just take and bring it in here just like this. That's going to sit right there like that. Make sure you're straight. That's going to quit right there. And then this one here is going to come on the outside edge and it's going to come all the way down. Just like that. Now, if you don't like this idea, uh, just go ahead and use your ruler. Put it in here at three quarters of an inch. And you use your 45 degree triangle. So it's your option, whatever, whatever you, uh, you feel comfortable with. We're stopping right here on the inside here. Or I'm sorry, this is the outside. I'm sorry. Right there is the outside. On the inside, we're stopping right here because I want, to, uh, I want this outside border to go all the way around. Okay. Uh, we are going to break this, but I'm not going to break it right here because I don't want to run these all across there. Uh, as you've seen in some of my other projects, I don't like to run a bunch of straight lines all the way along. They're difficult to keep straight. They look pretty good when they're on the work board. As soon as you hang them on the wall or hang them in a window or something, you see how far off they really are. And they don't work, look quite as nice. So we'll move this line out of here just so we don't have any confusion that we... Don't want that. We don't want these out here either. 
All right. So we're moving along. So that's our that's going to be our design right here. To find out where we're going to put the line for here, we're going to measure this. It's five and a half, so that'd be two and a half and a quarter. That's going to be right there. So we're going to be here two and a half and a quarter. Uh, we could do two things. We could make this line go down on an angle to, to match this, or we can make it go straight across to match that. So uh, I think I'll just make it go straight across here. Bring it in here. Okay. So we're coming right along. So we got a plan here. So this top one up here, I want to break that into thirds. Uh, let's see how big it is. It's uh, about ten and a quarter on the inside here. So uh, I'm going to make this like a, a three and a half, three and a half, and whatever comes out in the middle we'll be happy with. Uh, it doesn't have to be exactly right. If the middle one's a little bit longer, we don't care, or if it's a little bit shorter, or if you wanted to go to the trouble to figure out the math to make it perfect, you could do that too. So right here, we're going to come in here and we're going to go three and a half. You know what, I'm going to go three and a quarter because I think three and a half is going to get us. Uh, so three and a quarter. Make sure you come from the same spot on both of them, outside edge. Outside edge, three and a quarter. There we go. So bring in your ruler here now. I'm going to match it on a 45 to match the rest of the, uh, the ends of it here. Right there. Pull it down. And we're going to go right here. All right. <clears throat> so that's our basic pattern here. We're going to have iridescent, iridescent, iridescent. We're going to have a border glass around here. And our photograph was going to go here in the middle, just like that. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and put some arrows in here and number these pieces so we don't get confused on that. And if you've seen uh, my arrows before, basically they're going to tell me what way the grain of the glass goes. Because I'm going to run them all the same if I have enough glass to do that with. Here again, we're going to mark in here. If you run the grain all the way, by the way, this one right here, it's not going to be broken here. Oh, forgot this little guy here. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and put arrows on all of this stuff. I'll go offline and put some uh, put little pointers on them. And we'll put some numbers on these. And uh, then we'll come back and uh, we'll get ready to lay out a form. And we'll get ready to make this. So it'll be that easy. So I'm just going to put some little pointers on it like this. So we'll know that that's where the, everything's going to be facing up on this. So this ought to be a fun project. Shouldn't take too long. We've got, what, we got uh, two, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. We have only 12 pieces of glass in here. So this would be pretty good. This would primarily be for a beginner also. The only tricky part when we put this together is when we make the lead right here when it comes to a 45. Uh, those can get a little bit tricky. I'll show you an easy way to do those. We'll cut our we'll cut our lead out 245, 245s to come together to make a frame, and then we'll trim the top of it off, and we'll just butt a piece of H came into the top, and then when you solder it, uh, it all looks like it's one. So uh, that works out pretty good. So I'll go offline, put the rest of our arrows in here, uh, and uh, I'll put some numbers on these, so we'll have what we're what we're working on, and when we come back. Uh, I'll have uh, to show you what we're going to do. I'll have blackened this all in with a felt tip pen so uh, you can uh, see exactly where we're going to uh, build the project. So we'll be back in a minute. All right, we're back. We got everybody uh, 
darkened in here with our felt tip pen so we know where we're going to put our lead now. Uh, made a couple changes here. I, uh, I had that going off to the side here. I made these uh, go more up and down. And other than that, everything's about the same as we had it. Uh, we've got our uh, pattern here now. So uh, we'll cut that all apart. And uh, we'll probably start right here in the middle and start to build this. So we'll build it from the middle out. So if it starts to grow a little bit, we won't really care. Uh, we're going to just cut these with a regular pair of scissors again instead of using the uh, pattern shears. Uh, so anyway, we'll be back in a minute. We'll get these pieces all cut up. Then we'll lay a form down here. We're going to build inside of a form like we've done on some other projects. And uh, we'll be ready to go. So we'll be back. All right, we're back again. So anyway, uh, we're going to get ready to build a form for this to build this. Uh, we got uh, we got our pattern pieces all cut. So here's what they all look like cut up. And of course, our photograph's going to go here in the middle. So uh, stick it in here like that. So that'll give you an idea what this is going to look like. So uh, what we're going to do now, we're going to build our form here. So we're going to need a piece to start with. We're going to set it right here. We're going to let this part of this light uh, or this line show right there. And I'm just going to put that uh, just about right there. And we're going to use our small brads here. These are like one inch. And we're just going to tack this down. Make sure it's up tight against our backstop so it's straight. Put one more right here in the middle. Okay, so we can get we can get rid of all this stuff here. So we got our backstop now. We we'll take and move all that stuff away. So now our down pieces here, they're going to fit in here like this. And we're just going to let our line show here. That represents the the U came right there. This just gives us a perimeter so that we can build inside and we don't get it to go all crooked on us. All right, put one more up here at the end here. And we'll come over in this side and we'll do the same thing here. Make sure you get in here straight. We want to we want to get our form right where it should be to start with, otherwise our, our project will come out a little bit odd. That one there kind of moved in just a little bit. I'd rather, I'd rather have it closer to the line than it was. If you have one like that, it gets started and it's not quite where you want it, take it out and start it over. Don't don't just go, that's close enough. We'll be all right with it. Here we go. That's still kind of pulling out there. So, uh, like I said before, we want this, we want this right where we want. Uh, so, let me get this right here. Just not holding it down tight enough when I put the nails in. Sometimes the nails will take and move it away too. See how that moved that away there? We've used these little brads over and over and over. Some of them get bent. There we go. Some of them get bent. So uh, when you start to put them in there, they want to they want to force your form uh, to go crooked. So if you find one like this one that seems to be bent, you could try to straighten it. Or in this case, we're just going to put it in the trash and we'll get us a straight one here. Uh, so we don't... Uh, have to fool with that one again next time. So we'll put one more right here. And 
like I said in the other videos, it's not a race. So get it the way you want it. Don't just go like that's close enough. And then when you're done, your end result's not what you wanted. Okay, there we go. Okay, so I'm going to go offline. I'm going to cut us some you came to go down here, to come up here. Uh, we'll cut them on an angle right here so that the ends will butt together. And we're going to leave them stick out here maybe a half an inch or so because uh, we don't know exactly how much this is going to grow as we start to add our glass in here. So I'll cut those offline. Uh, we'll take a look at their border pieces here. And uh, then when I come back, we'll start to put this together. So uh, this is a really quick project. So again, fairly simple. So it'll be for the beginner. So I hope you give it a try. We'll be back. Okay, so we got some uh, glass cut up now. So I'm going to show you how these all go together. Uh, this is the only tricky one right here is where we're going to make a, a joint where these three come together here. Uh, so anyway, the border glass here, we're going to start right here at the bottom here. And we're going to set our first piece of border glass in here. And we're going to take a uh, small piece of old U came and put against the edge here so that we don't chip our glass. And then we're going to take and we're going to put a small piece of H came and you'll notice it's got it's cut on a 45 degree angle. You want to cut that on the angle because you want it to when it fits in here you want it to fit in nice and tight right here. If you use this a straight angle when you put this in here you'll have this big gap right here and that'll be difficult to solder. So always cut your lead to fit tight if you can. So that's going to go right here, and then this one here is going to go right in here. This is number six. It's going to go right in here. Pull it in here. Now I've cut some lead for this. Here again, we've got this cut on a 45 because when it comes down to the edge here, you want it to line up good. I've left it long intentionally, and I've left this one long intentionally because as we build out here, this is going to grow a little bit, and we don't want to cut it off yet before we know exactly where we're going to end up. So they're left a little long to start with. This comes in here like this. And here again, make a 45 right there to hold that. Take and pin it so it doesn't get away from us. I'm going to come over on the other side. We'll do the same thing here. We're going to put number one in here. I'll take and hold it here with my little piece of U came. Here again, we have another piece cut on 45s. That goes in there like that. Oops, make sure it's down though. This one here will go in here like this. Make sure you get it up into the slot on your on your lead because otherwise you'll get a false reading there and uh, it won't go together properly. Pull that out. Here's another piece of H came with the 45 on it. That's going to go right in here like this. We're going to pin it back here and then we're going to take our number nine piece, this one right here, and we're going to bring it down and it's going to fit in here just like this. We're going to take and pin it. Now when we get to here, I'm going to show you what we're going to do. We have a little tiny piece of H came cut straight on both sides. So we're going to set it in here. Then we're going to come over here. We're going to take our other piece Bring it down till it matches right here. Now, I'm going to leave these long again because we don't know exactly where this piece here, which is our where where our, our uh, decal is going to go. We don't know exactly where it's going to end yet, so we'll leave it long. So this one here, from when we first started, I kept saying cut it straight using the flat using the flat side of your shears. If you cut it with this one here. That creates a 45 degree angle. So what we're going to do, we're going to cut this time. We're going to use that point to our advantage and we're going to set it in here just like this. It comes right down here and touches right there. Take and pin it. And then we have another one cut exactly the same. We're using the point again. I'm going to pull this off. It's going to come right down here. Push it in here. 
See what a nice joint that makes so when we solder that it'll be perfect in place. So now we're going to insert our piece that's going to be where our photograph's going to be. And if we've done this right, this point should line up right there. So uh, we'll take and pin this right here. And I'll pin it right here. So now we've found where this point is going to end right here. And so then we'll go ahead and we'll, we'll trim these up to match. And then we'll go on and we'll build this on out. So anyway, I just wanted to show you that so we can go ahead and get started with the, uh, we'll cut these two pieces next and we'll trim all this back off so that it lines up where we want it to line up. So we'll be back on the next video and we'll go ahead and finish out this piece. And then here's the, uh, here's the top part uh, that's going to go around the top of this. And then we'll show you how to do the uh, water slide decal on here and some prep that we have to do to it. So we'll be back in a minute uh, when we get this done and we'll show you how it's all going to go together. So we'll be back. Okay, well, we're back. Well, we made a little change, a change in our plans here. Uh, if you remember right, we were going to use uh, this uh, yellow kitty. And this is one of my granddaughter's cats. And uh, when the light goes through it, it goes quite light. So I decided to uh, have her shoot another one of her cats. And so uh, this is the one she uh, gave me. Uh, I like this one better. It has uh, more contrast to it. And when the light goes behind it, it uh, doesn't uh, fade away so much. So I marked an exterior line around here where we want to cut it. So we're going to cut it uh, uh, and then we're going to adhere to our glass. So this is the water slide decal material that we talked about. This is printed on an inkjet printer just from a regular photograph. And I'm going to use my rotary cutter and my straight edge here to cut it. I'm going to cut it on the outside of these lines that I have drawn on here in case if it's a little bit bigger than our glass, I'm not going to worry. I can always take and trim it after it dries. So we're going to take our cutter and I'm going to set my ruler in here. And I'm going to go right on top of the line. Just like that. And I'm going to take and I'm going to just cut this right off of here. And I'm going to come over here on the other side, do the same thing, put it right on the line. And we'll do two more and then we'll be ready to go here. Now the water slide decal material, we're going to put it in a, a little pan of water and It'll curl up. It'll make it into a ball. I'll bring it over and show you. We'll do that right here. Uh, the material itself is very thin, so you have to be really careful with it. Otherwise, you'll tear it. And when you first print it onto your paper, uh, you take and you spray it with a couple coats of uh, clear acrylic. So it's right here. It's uh, just a uh, crystal clear enamel, so it works real, really well. Just a couple coats of that, let it dry really good. So we're bringing our <clears throat> pie pan here. It's got some water in it, and we're going to drop our decal into it. As I said before, it'll take and curl up here. After it's in the water for about a minute and a half, two minutes, it will release from the backing on the, uh, on the paper, and it will allow you to slide it off. So I'm going to move this over out of the way just real quick quick here and I'm going to bring in our piece of glass that we're going to put it on. This is our piece of white opaque glass. This was actually a little bit kind of has a little cream tint to it. Uh, it doesn't make any difference. The, the light will come through it with, uh, without any problem. So it's going to be mounted on point. So we'll go from here. I have a couple little paper towels here. Uh, one of them here I'm going to dampen just a little bit. I'm just going to put it in my water to make it a little bit damp. So I'll pre-moisten this uh, glass before we put it down here. So let's see how our decal is doing. We'll let it roll around here. I'm going to take it here and turn it over. Like I said before, the material is very fragile. So uh, you, can't, uh, you can't go pushing around on it too much or you'll, you'll uh, tear it. 
So I've got it, I've moved it back over here so you can see it here. I've got it upside down now, so I'm making sure that it's that it's being saturated with water. And turn it over here. If you've worked with other water slide decals, you'll know how to how to use them. Let's see if that's going to come off yet. Nope. It'll come off real easy when it's ready to come. And it'll uh, you'll be able to slide it right off of the uh, backing paper here. All right, let me get my chair here. And uh, we'll come over here because it's about ready to slide off of there now. So we'll get ready to pull it in here. See there, it's going to ready to slide right there. Okay, so I'm going to take the one that we wet down just a little bit. And I'm going to go over this glass just a little bit. I want to moisten it up a little bit. That'll make it a little easier for our decal to slide around. And then I'm going to take it right here. And I'm going to put it down. I'm going to try to hold it straight as I can. And I want to pull this off just like that. And then I want to take and hold this very lightly. Take my dampened paper towel. And I want to move out any bubbles that are in it. So a couple right here I want to push out. Okay, after you get them, get it smoothed out where you want it. Take a dry, a dry uh, paper towel now and just go over it real lightly and knock off any moisture. This will help push it down and it also will help to let it set to the glass. All right, that's all there is to it. So that's how you do the water slide part of this. There's a little bit right here. It's got a little bit of a ripple there. See if I can take that out. There it goes. Make sure you're happy with the way that decal looks. So we're going to let this set now for uh, two or three hours. To make sure it's dried and adhered good to the glass really well. And then what we do when we come back, uh, we'll spray it with one more light coat of our uh, crystal clear enamel or acrylic. And uh, then we'll go ahead and we'll put it into our project. So uh, we'll be back when we get that done. And uh, we'll get ready to wrap this uh, project up. So uh, like I said before, you can put any picture in there that you have. Say you have a, a favorite picture of a pretty flower that's in the garden. Or maybe you have some other kind of a pet. Maybe you have a bird or a dog uh, that you would like to have. Uh, maybe you have a grandchild that you'd like to make a nightlight for. You could use the, his or her picture. So there's all kinds of possibilities for these uh, nightlights. So anyway, you can uh, use your own imagination to, to do whatever you like to with it. So we'll be back when this, uh, when this is uh, taken care of. We will, like I said, we'll have sprayed it with another coat of clear acrylic, and we'll move on from there. So we'll be back in a minute. Okay, so we've got all our pieces cut now, and we've got our, uh, here's our centerpiece now. So uh, I've clear sprayed it with my acrylic one more time. So it came out really nice. If you look at it really close, it's gotten really nice and smooth on us. So we're ready to put this together now. So anyway, our centerpiece is going to go right here. And we'll stick it in here. This goes in here exactly like that. And then we have a, a down piece that's going to go here. And we have a down piece that's going to go here. Just like that. Okay, now remember I said to cut these on a 45 here. So these are going to butt in here like this. They sit in there like that so that they'll line up here so when we solder them, we won't have a big gap gap on them. So those go in there like that. This goes in here like that. And then we take our side piece here and just slide it down in here. Just 
set it in there just like that make sure it's in good against the channel all the way around we just take and put a little piece of our old u came here so we don't chip our glass to hold this right like that and then we'll come over on the other side here we'll put the other piece in here put it in the channel take and slide it down push it around so it's right where you want it here again we'll use a piece of old you came here to hold it so it doesn't move around and now we have this little tiny one right here he's going to go right in here he's going to come down here and butt up against these guys right here just like that and then we have a piece of h came that's going to go around the top of it here to tie this all together so once we get these pushed down where we want them we can take this out we can start our h came over here And we'll just set it right in here. We'll take and pin it. Start to bring it around. We'll pull this one out here. Here again, make sure everything's up inside the channel. And we can push that on around just like that. You can take our little tool again you can come in here in this in the groove here we can push this around to be sure that it's up against our channel exactly where we want it go ahead and pin it just a couple more pins here and then we'll put in our outside border here so we come back over on this side here we'll pull these out real quick let's take and stick this in the you came here and then bring it down into the H came. Here again. Use this so it don't you don't chip your glass when you're doing this. Because it wants to go right there. We have another little piece here. These are cut on a 45-2 or or kind of a close angle to that. Because we want to be sure that when they go in here, that one's upside down. When it goes in here it goes like this the center piece goes in here like this here again we'll get another piece of our old you came here and this last one's going to go in here like this make sure you get those going the right direction that one's going to go right there. And our last piece is going to go right here. Make sure it's up in the channel here, otherwise it won't fit. There we go. Now I noticed this was fitting a little bit tight right here. If you have one that's fitting a little tight, just take your tool here. And you can kind of open that up just a little bit. This glass is going around the outside edges a little bit, a little bit uh, thicker, so it wants to get hung up in there. So now we'll start this one over on this side here. We'll pull this around, set it in here. We'll pin it, move these out. Here again, check to make sure it's in the channel. Come on around. Take and just pick it up here a little bit. There you go. And take our little block of wood here again. Push it around, make sure it's up good and tight. Then we're going to take and we're going to pin it. So it doesn't get away from us. There we go. Okay, so now I'm going to go uh, offline for a second here. I'm going to get our siren iron plugged in, and we'll get ready to solder it. Even though uh, we put our clear acrylic on here, uh, 
We still want to kind of keep the flux away from it. So I'm going to stick some little square pieces of paper in these corners right here, just so I don't accidentally get uh, some flux on our um, decal. Uh, I put it on it before and it never, never bothered it, but I like to take a precaution to make sure I don't get it on there. So when I come back, you'll see some little white squares in here. That's to protect the decal from uh, my flux when I get ready to solder it. So I'll get the siren iron heated up and uh, we'll get ready to solder this and uh, the project will be all done. So I hope you've been following along. It's kind of a fun project. And if you've got a favorite picture of yours, I hope you'll give this one a try. So we'll be back in a minute. All right, we're back. Okay, so anyway, we've got our project all ready to solder here now. And uh, so we've got some of our familiar instruments here. We've got our solder. I'm using a 6040 solder. I'm using a, a liquid flux. I guess we better get some if we're going to do this. It... Uh, I'm using one that's called a Classic 100. It's a gel flux. It's water soluble and it's, uh, it doesn't smoke or doesn't have any odor to it. So we just put a little bit in our cup here. And uh, then we're going to take our soldering iron. We have a sponge on our soldering holder. Here, this is the one we've been using for all of our project. This is a Waller 100. It's a 100 watt soldering iron. The tip tells us how hot it is. This is a a number seven tip which is 700 degrees and uh, I always take a little piece of old you came here and I like to rub my iron on it just to be sure that we haven't had any voltage spike or something and have a real hot iron to start the soldering with so to get started as I said we can put the little little pieces of white paper around here uh, we're going to take and we're going to brush these joints down here just a little bit knock any oxidation or fingerprints, any oil off your skin. And uh, just kind of shine them up a little bit. This just helps the solder flow a little bit better. Doesn't take a long time to do it and it just gives a, a little bit better start on a project. Then we're going to take our brush and we're just going to apply our flux to it. The little piece of paper that I stuck in here just keeps the uh, any flux and solder when we get ready to solder away from our decal. Uh, the decal is pretty well permanent because of the uh, the acrylic we put on it, but uh, I always like to keep it kind of isolated away from there. Okay, now in the past, like I said before, you can hold the whole whole roll of roll of solder. I usually like to take off maybe oh, 8 to 10 inches and just take your dikes and just cut off a, a section of it uh, because I like to solder I like to hold my solder down flat against my where I'm soldering and I'm just going to put a little bit of a tin on my iron right here and I will start right here and just take about a, a sixteenth of an inch right off the end here to get your soldering to go here this is the one where they have all the intersection. Just put it over here and take a little bit more. Solder the whole group at one time. If you notice by doing the, like I showed you on the lead, this makes a really nice looking joint. Just come up here and we'll solder these all up here tight. When you're soldering, it doesn't really make much difference where you start or just where you move around. Uh, if I'm doing a copper foil job, I kind of solder an area and then move away from it and go somewhere else so that I don't get the glass too hot. If you have one that happens like this where it kind of sucked down in there, just give it just a little bit more solder and uh, let it uh, rise back up. Soldering is a technique, it just takes a little while to learn. Uh, after you do it for a while, you'll, uh, you'll get a technique that you like to do it with. Like I said, I'm using a 60-40 solder. It melts a little cooler than the 50-50 uh, solder. So uh, 
it seems to flow real nice. Uh, the 6040 melts at a nice temperature for using uh, lead. If uh, you use the 5050, it uh, melts somewhat close to the temperature of the lead. And uh, what will happen there is you, if you're not careful, you'll, uh, you'll burn a hole in your lead. So there we got that all uh, soldered up. I'll go offline, turn it over, and solder up the uh, other side, and uh, then I'll clean it up a little bit. Then up in here in the top here, we're going to take and we're going to do like we've done on all the other projects. We're going to cut this back about a quarter of an inch. We're going to cut it on an angle to make some points on it. We're going to fold them over, solder them shut, and then we'll dress it up on some 80 grit sandpaper. We'll do the same thing down here at the bottom. And uh, the project will be all done. We'll be able to put it in our stand and uh, we'll light it up and uh, let you take a look at how it came out. So we'll be back in a minute after we get everything all ready to go. I'll show you how we're going to do the corners. Okay, we got it all soldered now. We got it soldered on both sides, as you can see here. So we still got these ends sticking out here. So we want to take care of those. So we're going to do, like I said before, we're going to take this and we're going to cut this about a quarter of an inch longer than the edges. And then we're going to come in here and we're going to cut this like this. And then we're going to take it and we're going to cut it into a point right here. And that point right there. That point right here, we're going to bend that down into this opening right here. So I just do that on the edge of my work table. And what that does is that closes up this big gap right here so it makes it easier to solder that shut. So here again we're going to cut this about a quarter of an inch long. Going to come in here and we're going to cut back here, back here. Going to set it up here. Cut this to a point. Just like that. Take it on the edge of your table. Bend it over. Now, to solder these shut, I need some way to hold this up. So if you've watched my, some of my other videos, you'll notice I'm going to use a, uh, a drill vise. Not everybody has one of these, so if you've got a couple 2x4s or a uh, block of uh, wood that you can stick in here and hold this, I'm going to just tighten this up just a little bit to hold this. Uh, you can take and uh, hold it there. And so we can get this to solder shut here. Uh, I'll put this around here so you can see what we're going to do here. We're just going to take and flux this up just a little bit here and over here. You know what? I'll take and move this around so you can see what we're going to do here. We'll put this up on the edge like that. This is just a nice way to finish this off. Uh, once we solder it, you could leave it actually, just leave it like that. I'm going to put it on some 80 grit sandpaper and smooth it down like we've done on all the other ones. But uh, I'll show you, it doesn't look bad when it's soldered. Right there, that'll do it. Doesn't take a lot, it just closes up that open end there. So we'll turn it around, we'll do the other one real quick. Just take your iron, put it on the side, hold it right here. There you go, like that. So like I said, you could leave that like that. It doesn't look bad. On the other end here, we've got a couple little gaps right here. Those actually look pretty good. Uh, we'll close them up anyway. Uh, I'll show you what I mean by closing them up. We're just going to take and we're going to solder just a very light solder on there, and then we'll take and smooth them down. As I said, this just gives you your piece of a more finished look on it. Just a very little bit right there. Okay, so I'll be back in a minute. I'm going to take this offline. I'm going to go ahead and uh, sand those down. And when we come back, uh, we'll take these little white 
marks out of there and uh, be sure we got it all cleaned up. We need some work right in here. It's a little bit dirty. We'll clean it all up and uh, then we'll go ahead and we'll put it in our stand and we'll light it up and we'll, we'll get a look at our project. Okay, so we're back here. We got our edges all taken care of now. I'm just going to give them a little final touch. I'm going to use a, uh, a emery board here and it's going to kind of smooth any sharp edges over just a little bit, kind of finish it up. This, uh, even though it looks shiny right now, give it a three to five weeks and it'll be all uh, oxidized back to all gray. So don't worry about if you put a few little scratches on it, you'll be just fine. It just cleans it up a little bit to make it look all completely finished. Here's these down here a little bit. Just touch them a little bit. Just like that. All right, so as our finished product here, we'll take these little guys out now. We don't need those. So there it is. The edges are all finished up. So uh, the next step is we'll go in and we'll uh, put it on a stand and uh, we'll uh, turn it dark and light it up and let you see what it looks like. Like I said, I'll give it a final cleaning. I'm gonna come in here, I see it right here. There's a line where I either marked it when I cut the glass or so forth. So it needs to be cleaned up. And uh, so anyway, we'll go ahead and do that offline. And when we come back, uh, we'll light it up. So we'll be back. All right, we're back. So we put a light behind our project now. So you can see it came out really, really nice for us. So uh, happy with the project. I hope you've been following along and uh, you give this one a try. So the center is made with the water slide decal uh, inkjet. Make it off of your computer. Uh, we'll pull it out here a little bit so you can see the nice look it has. Uh, if that light is too bright for you, that's a seven watt bulb. You can put a four watt bulb in it if you want to make it a little uh, not quite so bright, so you can go from there. So anyway, I hope you follow along on the project. I hope uh, you'll give it a try. You, like I said, you can put any picture in there. If you've got a favorite picture of a flower uh, or another kind of a pet, you can use that or put your uh, grandchildren in it or whatever you have. So anyway, hope you'll uh, give it a try. I'll see you on my uh, next YouTube video.